Hello and welcome to Let the Growth Flow, a spiritual place to heal mind, body, and soul. My name is Alexis and I'll be your host. My hope for this podcast is to help people learn about all things spiritual at the same time allowing themselves to heal in any way that they need to. I plan to do that by sharing my own spiritual experiences as well as bringing other spiritual mentors onto the show. Hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of Let the Growth Flow. So to start off today, I wanted to pull us all a card. I'm still pulling from Colette Baron reads Animal, the Spirit Animal Oracle. So I'm just shuffling the cards now. I'm always asking, what does the collective need to know for their highest healing? Let's see. We have Sandpiper Spirit, Be Playful. Hmm. Maybe some of us have been taking things way too seriously lately and not finding the joy and fun. Let's go ahead and see what the book says. Sandpipers are like cute little clowns, poking their beaks into the sand before darting off to chase the waves. The appearance of Sandpiper Spirit is a sign that now is the time to engage your playfulness. Whatever tasks you have before you, perform them with the lightness of being. Explore the familiar, discovering the new and the old. Who knows what treasures await you when you let yourself laugh and have fun. Sandpiper Spirit's happy and curious nature can help you to feel rejuvenated as you remember your ability to run and fly and dance playfully. I could not have asked for a better card for us today with the things I wanted to talk to talk about. So Sandpiper Spirit is reminding you to be playful. Find the joy in the little things and be silly. Forget about what other people may be thinking of you because honestly, they're probably not. You are probably more concerned with what others think than what others are actually thinking of you. That feels like something we needed to hear. So, today I wanted to talk about an experience from my childhood of seeing spirit and then talk a little bit about self-love, self-worth, and enjoying seasons of rest. So, to get started, I had this experience, I want to say I was in, gosh, maybe first grade. I was young. That's all I remember. (laughs) Um, but on the weekends, my parents would sleep in a little and my brother and I were always up at like, okay, let me rephrase. I was always up by like 7am. I've always been a morning person. And I, this morning I woke up, I wanted to play with my brother. I wanted to play with my parents and everybody was still sleeping. And I was like the end of the world for me. I was, was pouting and crying. So I went to the backyard we had a swing set and I was swinging on the swing, just being dramatic and pouting like "Mm, nobody wants to play with me and I started hearing I want you to imagine like fists on a window banging (laughs) like that's what I was hearing and I was like what the heck so I looked up to my parents bedroom there was nobody there I looked to my brothers nobody was there because they were both in their rooms and both their rooms were facing the back of the house which is where I was in the backyard So I looked down to the other window that is there, which was an office, and there was two kids, one little boy, one little girl, wearing, like, Newsy-style clothes. Like, think of the musical The Newsies, like, those kind of clothes. And they were banging on the window. I just remember they looked so sad, but every time that they were banging on the window, I legit heard the, like, thud. And... I like stopped and I stared and I was freaking out and I was so scared. I just didn't want to look at it anymore. I ran inside. (laughs) So logically thinking now, I'm like, why did I run inside to where I was seeing these people? But I darted straight to my parents' room and I was like banging on their doors like somebody's in the house, somebody's in the house, somebody's in the house. And of course they're like, what, what? And they like come down and I'm like, they're like, where? And I'm like, in the office, I saw two kids. And they went and checked in the office and 
everywhere else in the house and they're like babe nobody's here like well like we checked like you must just be imagining things and I was like no I saw it like I saw it and I was like they were banging on the window I heard them every time and they were like nobody's here sweetie like you must have just been imagining and I know still to this day that I saw something but basically that experience scared me so much when I was a child I saw things earlier in life too like even before then I would see stuff and still same thing it was like chalked up to imagination but that time really scared me for some reason I think because the kids looked so sad and it was so real like the I can still hear the banging on the window in my head and um, I think I blocked out seeing spirit at that point on so we're gonna fast forward to like present day like actually just last week I was walking and I was in a crosswalk literally crossing like a main street and as soon as I stepped into the crosswalk I see like a shadowy figure come into my my vision of sight like it literally fades in it was walking towards me and then it like took two steps that I could see and then it faded back out And I was in the middle of the crosswalk just staring, like blinking my eyes like, did this really just happen? Like, am I, what? Like going crazy. It's really like um, a weird, uh, how do I explain this? It's kind of weird when you see spirit that way. Um, Next week with my guest, we'd actually talk about this. And it kind of makes you feel like, am I real? Is this real? Like, what's going on? Like, you know, you kind of pinch yourself or like touch yourself to feel like, what is going on? Um, and I was like, oh my gosh, it's so crazy. I texted my fiance. I was like, I literally just saw a spirit walking in the crosswalk and it was really crazy. I'm covered in chills telling you guys this story. But um, then a couple of more days go by and I was talking to my roommate and somebody was coming through for her and um same thing kind of happened like it flashed back in and flashed the face like flashed clothes really quickly for me to see and then it faded away like into an aura again so um basically I think I'm starting to see spirit again so I'm not sure if like I'm to a point where I've healed some of the fearfulness of see- around seeing spirit but still unsure on when and how I want to be seeing them because it does freak you out a little bit but I wanted to share that experience with you all because I would be lying if I said I wasn't a little excited that I could see them but um, definitely like being able to feel them and just know their messages (laughs) more than seeing them so that's crazy but I will talk a little bit more about that in next week's episode with my guest I did want to start diving in more deeply to self-love, self-worth, and seasons of rest. So recently for myself, I have been realizing how much I go, like go, 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 go. Like I think back and as soon as I was 11 years old, I could take like a babysitting course. I started babysitting and since then I've never really slowed down. Like even in high school, I did all the things, like all the things that I think I humanly could. Like I was in way too many activities, but I loved them all. So, you know, whatever. And I still worked. Same thing throughout college. But I'm realizing how often we keep ourselves busy so that we don't have to feel. And that's one thing. The other thing is we keep ourselves busy because the moment that we sit down to relax and enjoy some time off, we get this nagging feeling inside of us that we need to be doing more, that it's not okay that we're sitting here resting and relaxing. So instead of actually resting and relaxing, we're sitting there working ourselves up and trying to think of the next thing that we can do to make ourselves feel worthy. Something to think about. But... I'm noticing, at least with the people in my life and myself, that there's a lot of seasons of rest coming up lately where it's like, okay, I have this unexpected couple days, this unexpected week or two where I don't have to work and I'm accounted for, like I'm still getting paid or like I'm not getting anything docked from me. And it's like myself and the other people in my life are trying to go about figuring out what's the next move what's the next step what can i do what can i do instead of just enjoying that time 
So I made a post about this on Instagram the other day and just want to read this quote to you all. Do you have the patience to wait until your mud settles and the water is clear? Can you remain unmoving until the right action arises by itself? Your tire is flat and you can't get to work. And your first thought is, oh my God, I'm going to be late to work. Oh my God, this is going to be so much money. What am I going to do? How am I going to get this fixed? And you start spiraling. This is like a really surface level example. I feel like, you know, like this is not something that you're in deep emotional turmoil about. That I feel like the more emotionally intense a situation is, the more we want to act right away. But do we have the patience to wait until those emotions, so to speak, settle? So let that wave of anxiety wash over your entire body of the, oh my gosh, I'm going to be late for work. This is going to be so much money. What can I do? Let it go. Let it happen. Let yourself feel those emotions and then literally take a deep breath and think, okay, what can I do? It's hard not to want to respond right away. It's our natural humanness, I think, is something happens, we want to respond. But what if something happens and we don't respond? We don't act. We don't do. We don't move. We let it be. Is there something so wrong with letting things be? And... Do you have the patience to give yourself time to feel emotions just yourself? Do you have the patience to figure out how you're truly feeling about something before you even speak it out loud and tell somebody else or look to somebody else for comfort or consolidation? Give yourself that time. And also remember that you're allowed to have feelings outside of your personality. You're allowed to have days where you're sad and you want to cry and you want to scream or you maybe want to freaking punch the pillow on your bed. And that doesn't make you a sad, depressed, moody person. Our feelings are separate from our personality. But give yourself the time to feel, to figure it out outside of anybody else. How do you feel about any situation at any time? Give yourself that time. So recently, I got that quote, the letting your mud settle from a book. And I might say this wrong, so let me me make sure. (laughs) It's really funny how this book came back into my life, but the book is Tao Te Ching um, by Stephen Mitchell. So believe it or not, somebody in college gave me this book and it sat on my bookshelf and I never read it. And then I think I even gave it away or honestly, it's probably somewhere in storage right now because I just moved to California. But the family I nanny for, the father is really into mindfulness and meditation and He gave me this book the other day because I was telling him how I'm learning to be okay with seasons of change, or excuse me, seasons of rest. And he said, oh my gosh, that reminds me of a quote in this book. And he got it and read me the quote that I read to you. Like, do you have the patience to let your mud settle and the water clear? I'm like, this is so accurate for everything going on in my life right now. And I've asked if I could borrow the book and I strongly, strongly recommend it to everybody because I am only halfway through right now, but it's a very short book and you could probably read it in like two hours, but I am reading through very slowly and then I want to reread it. Like I'm sure I could just flip to a page and read you a a part of it. That's so powerful. I might, maybe I can read you the whole page with the quote about Do you have the patience to let your mud settle? Let me find it here. Okay. If anybody does read this book, it's on page 15. But the whole page says, The ancient masters were profound and subtle. Their wisdom was unfathomable. There is no way to describe it. All we can describe is their appearance. They were careful as someone crossing an iced over stream, alert as a warrior in enemy territory. Courteous as a guest 
fluid as melting ice, shapeable as a block of wood, receptive as a valley, clear as a glass of water. Do you have the patience to wait till your mud settles and the water is clear? Can you remain unmoving till the right action arises by itself? The master does not seek fulfillment, not seeking, not expecting. She is present and can welcome all things. I'm covered in chills. Like, I feel like this is exactly what I need to be sharing this week. And I just want to encourage you all to take a big step back from your life. And right now, like, it's super mainstream to be manifesting all the time. Like, what do you want? Name it. The universe has your back. And that's so true. But take a step back and realize how much you're wanting and longing and always craving the next thing instead of being present and grateful for what you already have. Because the key of manifesting is when you sit down and you're grateful for everything you have, you're so happy with everything you have, that is when you can invite more into your life. So until you can sit and be patient and be unmoving and be grateful, you're never going to invite more into your life because it doesn't come to you when you're seeking. So this is a really short, quick episode this week, but I really wanted to hop on and talk about these things and how important it is to rest and embrace the seasons of rest. What are you supposed to be figuring out for yourself, healing for yourself in these moments, your gifted time to sit and be with yourself? I'm going to leave you guys with that, and thank you so much for tuning in. I am super so excited, as always, for all of our guests, but next week's guest, I don't want to, like, give it away yet, so it'll be a surprise, but tune in next week. I love you all. Happy healing, and as always, you can book any virtual medium readings, Reiki sessions, tarot card readings on my website, alexiseastintuitivehealing.com. Give me a follow on Instagram at alexiseasthealing. You can also find all of my services under my Instagram link. So thank you so much. Happy healing. See you all next week.